Legal lawyers for opposition leader Osman Sonko say they will continue the fight after the Supreme Court rejected his appeal to his libel conviction in a ruling Thursday. Sonko, a former mayor of Zingshom and leader of the opposition Pastel Patriots, was convicted of defaming tourism minister Manimbaye Mananyang. Legal and political observers say the ruling effectively bars the opposition leader from running in next month's presidential election. For more on the latest developments, reaction, and what the ruling means for Sonko's presidential ambitions, VOS Peter Kalote reached a reporter, Alpha Jalo, in the Senegalese capital, Dakar. It was a marathon ruling, but at the end, uh, Mr. Sonko's I mean, appeal case was rejected by the Supreme Court. And uh, this means that the May judgment has to be maintained. The only element that was removed from it is that, I mean, the detention of Mr. Sonko in the default of paying the 200 uh, million CFA franc fine uh, for damages for Minister Mam by Nyang. Will there be any consequences of this ruling from the Supreme Court for Sonko? Yeah, it is, it is very clear now, Mr. Sonko and his lawyers, they know that Mr. Sonko cannot, I mean, take part in the I mean, forthcoming presidential election slated on the 25th of February. Uh, but on the other hand, his lawyers say that they, they will fight on and uh, because they believe that all these charges are politically motivated. Has the supporters reacted following the ruling from the Supreme Court? Not at all. Even, I mean, in the southern city of uh, Zikansor, where Mr. Sonko hills and where he is a mayor, there were no reports of any protest. In Dhaka also, there was no report of any pro- Although on social media, people were, you know, reacting angrily, saying that, you know, if Mr. Sonko is not allowed to contest the elections, they are going to disrupt, I mean, the February presidential polls. What is now left for Osman Sonko in the political landscape of Senegal? Basically, what are his options? Now, the, the options are now many. You know, initially, just about a couple last month, uh, he designated his, I mean, um, his, his deputy, I mean, Basil Jumain Fai, to run instead if he is I mean, not allowed to run. But uh, that also, there was some problem because Basil Jumain Fai is also in jail because he was also, I mean, sent to jail for, you know, charges of, I mean, creating public disorder and so forth. So right now, the, 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 the only option that people think that Mr. Sonko is going to, I mean, rally for an order independent candidate or any of the candidates, especially they have mentioned one former minister in the, in the government of, you know, President Ablai Wade, one Abib C, because even Mr. Sonko, I mean, sent him some of his members of Mr. Sonko's, I mean, parliamentarians to back him during the nomination that's what, that was reporter Alpha Jello in Dakar. He was speaking with my colleague, Peter Klote. The Horn of Africa is facing two diplomatic crises. Somalia has recalled its ambassador from Ethiopia, while Sudan has recalled its ambassador from Kenya. Both countries are complaining of alleged interference in their internal affairs and threats to their sovereignty. Mohamed Yusuf reports from Nairobi. Experts warn that the two diplomatic crises, one between Kenya and Sudan and the other between Ethiopia and Somalia, could threaten the stability of East Africa. Sudan's government, led by the head of the Sudanese Armed Forces, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has expressed its displeasure with Kenya after the government there gave a warm welcome to Burhan's rival, the leader of Sudan's paramilitary rapid support forces, Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Hameti. Kenya received Dagalo Wednesday as part of its effort to find a peaceful settlement to the nearly nine-month-old Sudan conflict. Angered by the move, Sudan's government recalled its ambassador from Nairobi. Al-Burhan sees Kenya as favoring Hameti in the conflict and has called for Nairobi not to be part of mediation efforts spearheaded by regional bloc IGAD. In the other crisis, Somali leaders were angered by the agreement this week between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland. The deal will give landlocked Ethiopia access to the sea and allows it to establish a military base in Somaliland, which Somalia considers part of its territory. To protest the deal, Mogadishu recalled its ambassador from Addis Ababa. 
The head of the Horn Institute for Strategic Studies, Hassan Khananji, explains what the latest diplomatic spats mean for a region that has a history of border disputes and conflicts. Uh, for Sudan, it complicates efforts to mediate that conflict, uh, considering that Kenya has been a key player in the IGAD quartate. It also opens, of course, another area of potential conflict between Ethiopia and Somalia, uh, considering that uh, just in recent weeks, Mogadishu had made efforts to restart the reconciliation talks with Mer Geisa. And so what that does, it torpedoes all those efforts and I think sends uh, the entire you know, region into a tailspin with regard to diplomacy. Both Somalia and Sudan have long struggled with internal divisions and conflict which have displaced millions. Nasongo Meliro, an international relations and diplomacy lecturer in Kenya, says some foreign powers, including countries in the Gulf, are fueling the potential conflict between the African countries. So many foreign actors are at play in the region. And you can see that it is creating alliances that are now also degenerating into interstate conflicts. Because the Horn of Africa was uh, basically suffering from uh, internal conflict, but now we see a spike of interstate conflicts, whether they are not uh, uh, armed, but then they, they are conflicts between states. Molero says countries like Kenya and Ethiopia should not be taking advantage of the weak central governments in Sudan and Somalia to engage local leaders and pursue their own interests in those countries. We are seeing a situation where the tradition that has been there of engaging the government of the day, no matter how weak it is, but now it is almost changing. We are looking at uh, Hemeti and Burhan. We should be, in any case, Africa should be behind Burhan. But you can see that the states are selectively almost recognizing um, Hemeti. The African Union and other international actors are calling for the escalation of tensions and respect for each nation's territorial integrity and sovereignty. Mohamed Yusuf, VOA News, Nairobi. The African Union on Thursday joined the United States in appealing for calm in the Horn of Africa after regional tensions soared following a contested deal between Ethiopia and the breakaway region of Somaliland. Somalia has vowed to defend its territory after Monday's agreement, which is described as an aggression and a brilliant assault on its sovereignty by neighboring Ethiopia. The Memorandum of Understanding gives landlocked Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country, long desired access to the Red Sea through Somaliland. African Union Commission Chair Mosafaki Mahmat issued a statement appealing for calm and mutual respect to de escalate the seemingly tension between Ethiopia and Somalia. He called on the two nations to engage in a negotiation process without delay to settle their differences. Faki also urged them to refrain from any action that unintentionally may lead to a deterioration of a good relations between the two neighboring Eastern African countries. He stressed the imperative to respect unity, territorial integrity, and full sovereignty of all African Union member states. The statement said, Somaliland, a former British protectorate of about 4.5 million people, declared independence from Somalia in 1991, a move not recognized internationally and staunchly opposed by Mogadishu. The United States on Wednesday rejected international recognition for the separatist region and also called for talks to resolve the crisis. The United States recognized the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Federal Republic of Somalia within its 1960 borders, State Department spokesman Matthew Mirror told reporters. We join other partners in expressing our serious concern, he said, about the resulting spike in tensions in the Horn of Africa.
The wide-ranging deal signed in Addis Ababa gives Ethiopia access to commercial maritime services and a military base with Somaliland leasing its 20 kilometers 12 miles of coastline for 50 years. Somaliland's leader Musa Bihi Abdi has said that in exchange Ethiopia would fully recognize Somaliland, but this has not been confirmed by Addis Ababa.